What wonderful privilege is it to be able to say, Jesus is my friend. And Jesus is my big brother. No matter how many times you fall, your fall does not change your identity. Your being God's child is a birth thing, not a act thing. Let me explain. The fact that you became God's child is not based, please let me switch off that fan, is not based on what you did right, but what Jesus did right. It's not because you contributed anything. It's not because you did anything. Your being born again is between Jesus and God. That's why the New Testament cannot be broken. The New Testament is a covenant between God and Jesus. They are the parties in that covenant. You are a beneficiary of that covenant. There is nothing you can do to break that covenant because you are not a party to it. You understand what I'm saying? For lawyers who are in the house, you understand that you have parties to an agreement. And each party is able to terminate the agreement based on whatever they agree in the agreement. This is how to terminate this agreement. An outsider cannot terminate the agreement. As it is, you are a beneficiary of the covenant between Jesus and God. There is nothing you can do to break that covenant. So look at this. The day you were born, what did you do to be born? Eh? What did you do? Did you do anything? Do you know that you did not do anything to be born? You cannot disown yourself. There's nothing you can do to not be born. The moment God birthed you in the spirit and you gave your life to Christ, you are born in the spirit. There's absolutely nothing you can do to change that. When you fall, your fallings and your failings do not change the core of your identity as God's child. The prodigal son is still a son. It's just a prodigal son. God has different kinds of children. He has wonderful children. He has naughty children. He has stubborn children. He has prodigal children. He has disobedient children. But they are all eh? children. None is more children than the other. Your children meant was not achieved by anything you did. You cannot brag over anything. Because you didn't die on the cross. Jesus paid the price. When we talk about dream with them, I've said one thing over and over. That God is not mad with you. God is not angry with you. Number one, he's not angry with you. Number two, I said over and over that Satan cannot make you do anything. How many of you have been blessed with this list over since we started? I mean, how many of you have taken steps off from things you've struggled with? Yes. I see liberty in the name of Jesus. Next week, I'll be teaching on Golgotha. You don't want to miss next week's service. You don't want to miss it. Um, this is a final blow on the question of sin forever. That was what God used to break the backbone of Satan. That no matter what Satan does, is a failure. No matter how much he does, no matter what he does, is a failure. Please don't forget that. I said, number one, that you need to prepare for temptation. Jesus prepared for temptation. He was ready for it. You have to prepare. What are your responses going to be? Before you are tempted, what are you going to do? What are you going to say? Please don't forget this. If you don't prepare, you are already preparing to fail. You must make up your mind before time what your responses are going to be. How you are going to react. And all of you already know what your possible temptations will be. Your temptations cannot shock you. We all know what our proclivities are. We all know what our vulnerable, vulnerable areas are. All of us know. My vulnerable area may not be your vulnerable area. We all know what possibilities we have. So it's wise to prepare your heart before that time that this is how I am going to react when I'm tempted. If I don't do that, then I would fall into temptations. Number two, God made you a son. The first thing that Satan wants to do is to make you doubt that and pull you to the place where you believe or begin to think that you achieved it by your own work. I mentioned that earlier. So he wants you to put a doubt on your identity and stop seeing yourself the way God sees you and trust in your own work instead of the works of Jesus. When you see yourself the way God sees you, it will, it will constrain your act. Paul says that 
The love of Christ constrains us. There are things I don't do not because I'm not tempted, but I remember that I'm a child of God. It just struck your mind. Boy, you're a child of God. You can't be doing this. You can't be doing this. If you constantly remind yourself, constantly remind yourself of your identity in Christ, you will not fall into sin. Lift your punch to blow somebody on the eye. And remember, ah, you are a child of God. You are a child of God. You withdraw your hand. Now, blowing that person doesn't stop you from being a child of God. You are only a child of God that knows how to blow punches. But you don't blow that person because you are a child of God. Are you following my point? You remember who you are in Christ. You don't do it because of that. Number three, I said Satan doesn't have more than three temptations. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Everything that Satan tempts you with, please follow me, is just in this trade. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. The same thing he did to Eve in the garden. The same thing he did to Jesus in the wilderness. He doesn't have more than that. And all he does is just to repackage it. What you call pornography is a repackaged lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. What you call addiction is packaged lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. What you call addicted, you know, pursuit of fame and power is what you call pride of life. He said the same thing but repackaged. The Bible says Jesus Christ was tempted in every way. He was tempted in every way. Like we are tempted every way. But Jesus Christ was not tempted with fighting with his wife because he was not married. So does that mean that Jesus Christ was tempted with everything? Yes, because Satan does not have more than three things. Lost of the eyes, lost of the flesh, and pride of life. Everything that you're going to face in your life will be within this four, within this three. So you, if, you, if you already are sure of how your responses are, you can know what to do. What am I going to do if I'm tempted with money? What am I going to do if I'm tempted with women? Then I said last week that, I, I spoke about emotions last week. Last week I spoke about selfishness. And that selfishness is the center of all temptations. You are not the center of the universe. Everything in this world is not about you. Come to terms with that easily. One day we talked about selfishness in this church. I said, look, people just flare up. That somebody did not greet them. Somebody did not, you did not see me. You did not pass me. You know, all those kind of things. That obsession about yourself, you have to get delivered from it. The moment you are not obsessed about yourself, you are not selfish, even anger. You know, when you are angry, you say, How oh, can you do that to me? To me. You know, you are hitting your chest. Me, eh, me. You know, you, have you seen something like that before? Because it's just about you. You are just obsessed about how you feel, how your reactions are. And that's selfishness. Selfishness is everything divorce, cheating, pain, anger, beating, fight. Everything is about selfishness. When people fighting, you say, Do you know who I am? Have you seen me talk like that on the road? Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? We go to Usetu. That's bulls. Bah! Hey, come on. Do you know who I am? Because ordinary police is not there. We don't have sense again. Police is not there, so we must jam each other. Don't we have sense? But everybody is believing that the other person must talk for him because he's somebody. So they hit each other. Bah! Do you know who I am? You know, in Lagos, it's funnier in Lagos. <laughs> When I was in Lagos, oh God, Lagos, Lagos is one place. I mean, Lagos, guys, you guys are watching online. Sorry. Oh, God. The maddest people in this world are in that state. I don't think people that are normal in Lagos are more than three or four. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Let's maybe pass by the way. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm telling you. Ah! We're in the bus. I don't know what caused the rancor. And everybody started shouting. Do you know who I am? Do you know this? Do you know that? Do you know who you're talking to? Anybody's trying to make some phone call. Do you know? Who do you want to call? <laughs> so this fellow was even more spectacular than the rest of us. He just said, he just faced the driver because he was actually, you know, tackling someone beside him. I'm going to deal with you. He said, driver. So when he said, driver, all of us kept quiet. Ah, what does he say? Drive this vehicle straight to this station. Okay. He said, and nobody must come. All of with this man. <laughs> I said, so we, when we left our house, we don't have where we are going. We followed the, the one and see how you are going to deal with the man. You know, just selfishness. People are obsessed with who they are. They are nothing. 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 I spoke about announcing your emotions last week. Anessing, controlling that. The way you think will control the way you believe or the way you behave or the way you feel. And that the moment you, allow, you don't allow anybody to get to your thoughts or get to your emotions, you will find that. So today we're talking about the word of God. I'm going to round this up very fast because of our time. Luke chapter 4 verse 1 is the temptations of Jesus. And so we started this teaching. We never really looked at it closely. So I thought we should do that this morning. Then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit returned 
from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. The Bible says, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days, he had nothing. And afterwards, when he, was, he, was, when he had ended, he was hungry. Verse 3, and the devil said unto him, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. But Jesus answered, saying, it is written. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that forms, comes out from the mouth of God. Then devil taking him up to a high mountain. You believe that devil can take people up? Devil can take people up. Not every up is from God. Let me not go there. The devil took him up on a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, in a flash. Like I said, when I hear that seven million, my ears spark. Which is about seven million, little which is spark. <laughs> you know? Just in the moment of time, your whole life, the possibility of your life changing. Millions. You are just in that state. You have to make a decision now. Are you going to stand for God for righteousness or are you going to fall into sin? Are you going to fall just now in the moment? Blah, they give you a plate of pottage and your destiny in one plate. Which one will you choose? In the moment of time. Sometimes destiny does not give you a lot of time to make a decision. That's why you must prepare your mind before you get there. What will I say? What will I do? Because it's sometimes too late to make a decision. They offer you in the moment of time. He said, look all in the moment of time. He says, all this. Satan said to him, all this authority I will, I will give to you and their glory. For this has been delivered to me and I will give it to whoever I wish. Therefore, if you would worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus says, get behind me for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. You see what Satan did here is that he said to Jesus, this is why you came. You wanted to take the earth. The Bible says, and these worlds will become that of God and his Christ. The kingdoms of this world. This is what you actually want. This is it. This is what you believe in God for. Let me give you a shortcut. You don't have to go to the cross to get it. I can give it to you right here. Or right now. What do you have to do? Just bow down and worship. Isn't that easy? How many seconds does it take to bow down and just stand up? Instead of that three days of death and torment and suffering in hell and in pain, being beaten and stripped naked. Just bow down here, you know, and nobody was there. Nobody would have known that he bowed down. When you have to make decisions in the secret, it's just you and your character against you and your reputation. Nobody was there. People have fallen off and compromised on their character when nobody was there. And they come and share testimonies of jobs that they got when they slept with the boss. Bread, bread, praise the Lord. Our God is a miracle working God. What God cannot do, does not exist. And T, tell us, how did you get the job? Our God did it. Compromise. Satan offers you what God has planned for you, but he gives it to you in another way. A way that is different from God's way. Why go through this long route? God already had this plan for you, but you don't have to wait for God. I can give it to you on the platter of gold. So he gives you what, he offers you what God has planned for you, but not in God's way. And if it is not God's way, it's not God's will. You see, God's way is part of his plan. It has to be in his way, unless it is not his will. God has a way. He has a way he wants to promote you. He has a way he wants to bless you. He has a way he wants to take you to Canada. He has a way he wants to bless your business. God has a way. He has a way. He has a plan. He has a will. He has a way. And he has a time. And Satan wants you to boycott all that. And sell your soul for compromise. Everything you compromise to get, you will eventually lose. Everything. If you slept to get a job, you keep sleeping to retain it. And one time will come, you can't sleep anymore. You lose the job. Ask everyone who has compromised. You always lose it. Don't use sacrifice instead of obedience. The Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. Don't pay tight out of the money you stole in the office. Don't pay tight. You stole this money. Don't use sacrifice to bribe God so that you will be confused about your sins. He will not remember that this money was stolen. 
Don't pay first fruit from jobs that you slept with the boss to get. Don't pay first fruit. Keep it, spend it. Compromise is the devil's language. You have children of God compromising every day. You know, we can compromise. There's a way to get this done in this church. If you want to get money, there's a way to get money. They tell people to come. Oh boy. This ministry will do. Ministry will not be like this. Ministry don't change. There's just do ministry. So I do. You are going to suffer for a long time. And see, you just carry on your people. What do you think they do? Let's package some things. Just package an orphanage. NGO. So they use your church as money laundering. There are churches in Abuja, in Nigeria, that are money laundering centers. Billions of money transferring. You take it to Dubai. You start a church in Dubai. You start a church in Singapore. You use that money, then you go and submit it. You collect your cuts. That's, and they are paying tight. And the ministry is booming. They say, after all, we are winning souls. You cannot win souls with filthy money. Dirty. That guy brought his money. Peter said, out with your money. Your heart is dirty. God doesn't need your money. It needs your heart. If they are not accepted, you have to accept your money. No matter the amount, don't, don't use stolen money to bribe God. Don't. Let your testimony be pure. You say, after all, after all, and you know, we, we were able to get more people to know God. It's because of this money. No, you can't do that. That was what Saul did. They say, kill all the Amalekites. Kill everyone. He reserved it. Cow, sheep. He said, what is that? Someone said, what is that bleating I'm hearing? He said, no, there are some you know, goats that we reserve for sacrifice. Did God beg you for sacrifice? Did God, what did God tell you? Kill all. He didn't say sacrifice anything. To obey is better than sacrifice. So wait for God. God has a way. He has a will. He has a plan. He has a time. It's going to happen. Soon, we'll fill in thousands in our churches all over. It's all over the world. Amen. We are not going to boycott God's process. We'll follow it. We are not going to open orphanage and open NGO and open all those things to siphon government money. We are not going to. If I'm, t- I'm telling you, people have started, you know, coming and saying, man of God, you know, uh, we see what you're doing. We see how you are touching lives, you know, and we want to be a part of it. When they call money for you, it will take all the discipline in your life. You first, you first remember how your life can change. You just remember that your car is, your car is blitzing. Pray, pray. So see your car. Satan will remind you, see your life, see everything. See this, see this. With this, it's a moment of time. It showed Jesus in a moment of time. See all. This was the man that was hungry. He was hungry. There was no food. He was still hungry. He had not eaten. An hungry man, and you showed him all the glory of the world. You showed him Dubai, the Emirates. You showed him Singapore, Mauritius. He saw the blue oceans of Hawaii. So, hungry man said, Make a decision. This is, it is written. The Lord only shall you worship. Does he have the glory of the world today? He has it and much, much more. The Bible says he has a name that's above every other name in heaven and on earth, even in hell. At the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. He pays to wait for God. Pays. Compromise is the language of Satan. That's why you must make up your mind before time. How am I going to respond if Satan comes? How am I going to react when he comes to me? Jesus used the word of God. It is written, he kept saying, it is written, he is the word of God. Jesus is the word of God made flesh. He is God's word standing. He could have said, boom, and that would have been scriptures. He could have said, and that would have been scriptures. He could have said, get lost. And that, he could have said all that because anything he said would have been God's word. He said, very, very, I see unto you. It could have been. But Jesus made up his mind that he would go back to quote what was already written. That's exciting. If Jesus Christ thinks that the word of God was good enough for him, then it's good enough for me. It is written. It is written. It's written. The word of God is God's tool against temptation. It is written. It is written. So it says that. Then Jesus, if you look at, if you look, if, if you look at the next temptation, let's go at the next temptation. We have, we have done two now. The next one, it says, verse 10. No, verse 9. Then he brought him to Jerusalem. Since he said it is written, it is, okay, so it's, we are in, it is written now. Okay, let me to have it is written now. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. Give me King James, quickly. Verse 10. For it is written. You see that? That's Satan quoting Bible now. It is written. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. See that? To keep thee. He stopped there. Give me the next one. Verse 11. 
And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time you douse your feet against a stone. Please mark these words. They will give you, it's in just charge over you to keep you. Then it says, they will bear you in their hands, lest at any time you dash. Give me Psalm 91. So let's go to where that scripture was quoted exactly. Because Satan will twist God's word. He will take a word, because if you notice that you are creo, creo, everything, Bible, Bible, this is Bible, yeah, let's use Bible for him. He brings the Bible against you. It was twisted. Go to verse 6. Psalm 91, verse 6. What does it say? Okay, that's not it. Someone get that for me quickly. Verse 11. What is it? Give us verse 11. So look at that. Please put your mind on what Satan said. What Satan said was to double these two verses together. He, he mixed the two verses together. It's two verses, separate verses, but he mixed it together. He removed some parts, twisted it, and joined it. And said, For he shall give the angels charge over you to keep thee in all thy ways. That all thy ways, he removed it. So that keep thee, he, he twisted it to mean protection. Why what it meant exactly is guidance. That the angels will guide you in your way. It, was, it has nothing to do with protection. Are you following me? So, it was not a protection. Then it goes to verse 12. They shall bear thee up in your hands, lest you dash. So, this is the protection. Lest you dash. But it says, at any time. This is what Satan said. Give me verse, what we read? Verse 4, Matthew 4. When he was going to quote this, he added, at any time. Do you, have, do, you have, do you have that quickly, Michael? Luke chapter 4. When Satan was quoting the scripture, who, has, who can read for me? King James. Where, what verse did he quote? Verse 10. Is it verse 10 Satan quoted? For it is written. Yes. 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 Less at any time. So it makes it look as if no matter what you do, you can even be in rebellion against God's word. You can even be disobeying God's word. They will still catch you. You can be doing what God does not command you to do. Even if God says, stay here, you went there. No matter your day, they will help you there. That's God for you. You can do and undo. For what God, what God cannot do does not exist. So he puts you in that situation and he quotes that scripture and twists it. Did you see that? Can you see clearly? So we have gone to where it was quoted exactly. I'm sorry. He merged two scriptures together and perverted it. So if I don't know the Bible, if I'm not smart and I've not diligently studied God's word in context, I'd have fallen for that. I'd have fallen for that. Jesus says, no, it is written, that shall not tempt the Lord. Your God. He says, you just do anything. He twists the scripture. There are Christians that don't have any plan. No plan for their lives. If you ask them, ah, brother, and I said, forget, take no thoughts what you shall eat tomorrow, what you shall drink. For the Lord God, ah, take no thought. Do you think that's, that's God? He was talking about worrying, anxiety. He was not talking about planning. He was talking about anxiety and worry. He says, do not worry. That was what he was talking about. He was not talking about planning. A God, who plans more than God? A God that already planned the salvation of the world before he even created the world. A God, that God. Do you know how God plans? God, there is nothing that shocks him. He's prepared. He wrote the way the world would end. This world, the way this whole world would end. He wrote it down. Entire world, what will happen? I'll just, he wrote everything down and he wrote it down and made it available for you to read. Even you are reading God's, God's plan. The book of Revelations is God's plan for the end of the world. We already have it documented. How this, that's why we are not anxious. That's why we are not fearful. Because we know how this thing will end. Coronavirus cannot end this thing. God will blow the trumpet. Pop when he's ready. Are you following my point? So that's why. So God has a plan for tomorrow. He has a plan for next year. But the believers has no plan. The believers don't write anything. They themselves, they are all in all. The believers that go and says, you have no need for any teacher to teach you. That they are anointing you, teach you all things. Have you seen people say things like that? They don't go to any church. That's the scripture. If you ask them, they say, the Bible says, for ye have no need for any teacher. Can you imagine that? 
Satan isolating them to destroy them. But there are scriptures for it. That's why you must not casually read this thing. You must be diligent with your studies. If you know it half assertly, it's even possible to put you in more trouble than not knowing it at all. So it's better to even be ignorant completely of God's word than to know it partially. Satan will be able to use it as a weapon against you. So Jesus, throughout his temptations, kept saying, it is written. It is written. He's so familiar with God's word. He's so familiar with God's word that when he got back to the synagogue in Luke chapter 4, he entered the synagogue and he asked for the book of Isaiah. In those days, they don't have chapters. They don't have verses. They don't have all these things. It made it very easy for us. These things are very easy. Somebody came and put these things in chapters and books and you know, letters and all these kind of things. How many of you write letters to your friends and you put verses in it? Nobody writes one, two, three, four, five, six. Nobody does that. People write you know, as an article. So those things were written as articles. They were scrolls. So he picked up the scroll and wrote to Isaiah 61 where he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He knew where it was. He was very conversant with God's word. He was very familiar with God's word. He was very, very familiar. He's, he's, not, he's, not, he's not just guessing. He knows what God's word says. And it's possible for every believer to be like that. Verse 7, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Colossians chapter 3. Verse 16, Colossians 3, verse 16, the Bible says, Let the word of God dwell richly in you, in all wisdom. Give it to me, Colossians 3, verse 16. Let the word of God dwell richly in you. When you have God's word, it becomes a tool against Colossians chapter 3. What are you giving to me? Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Colossians 3, 16. Let God's word dwell richly in you, in all wisdom. If you ask an average believer today, how do you study God's word? You'll be shocked. People don't study God's word. People don't read God's word. Ask them, how often do you read the Bible? An average believer. I don't want to embarrass anybody, but ask here and you'll be shocked. How average, how, how's your average study? No, they don't study God's word. They don't read God's word. Some people, when they carry their Bible like this, it's where they carry it from church on Sunday. Where they drop it. That's where they're going to pick it up on Sunday morning. And you're wondering why you are so tempted. Why are you so weak? Why can't I stand against temptation? You are shocked. Why are you shocked? If you're able to stand against temptation, you should be shocked. That, ah, am I able to stand against temptation? I will not be able to read my Bible. Your Bible and the Word of God is God's food to your spirit. Now, this Bible as it is itself is God's Word in print. It's not God's Word. In that God's Word is a life. The, the Word of God that works is the Word of God that is in your heart. If, the, page, if the, the, the letters in this book does not leave this book and come into your heart and be planted in your heart, it cannot work. Satan has a copy of the Bible. All those vampire movies you watch, and people want to fight against demons. And there's a priest there. And there's fire coming. The light. Some people want to sleep, they open Psalm 23 under their pillow. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, bless the bed that I lay on. Lies. You rock up. You rock up. All lies. It doesn't work. Satan knows that these words are seeds, and except they are planted in your heart. People don't take time to study God's word. They don't feed their spirit. We bought a cat one day. The cat they eat. My, my daughter, my foster daughter, Tino doesn't like to eat. Doesn't eat. You have to force her, since she was a baby. Doesn't eat. We have, I mean, almost choke her before she eats. Why don't you want to eat? She doesn't want to eat. It's a struggle. Some children are like, they don't want to eat at all. So when we bought that cat, and that cat died, we put it in a cage and kept giving it food, but it refused, that cat refused to eat. That cat must be a protester. He said, I'd rather die. And the cat died. When the cat died, I took my daughter, Tinu. I took to the cat. I said, Tinu, see. She said, ah. I said, the cat is dead. I said, do you know what killed the cat? He said, he didn't eat. I said, if you don't eat, you will die. <laughs> you die. I said, see the cat. We're going to go and bury it now. We gave him food. We did everything possible. He didn't eat. Now he's dead. I changed it. I, I eaten that bit changed since then. <laughs> if you don't feed your spirit, it will die. You'll be weak. 
You'll be able to stand against the enemy when it comes against you. You must keep feeding your spirit with God's word. And you must know it. You must know a child of God. You must know God's word. Satan will come with, against you at all corners. You must know that's your strength. Now, if you look at Ephesians chapter 6, where they listed all the armor of a Christian, you have the helmet of salvation, you have the breastplate of righteousness, you have the belt of truth, you have the shoes for the gospel, you have the shield of faith. Then it says you have the sword of the spirit. Of all the armor, only the sword of the spirit is a weapon. Every other a defensive armory. The helmet to preserve your head, the breastplate to preserve your chest, the shield to preserve you, but only the sword is an offensive weapon. All of only the word of God is an offensive weapon against Satan. So you cannot play with God's word. You must study it. You must be enriched in it. Make it easier to study God's word. What does it take? You know, believers don't like to do things that are simple. What's I'm saying? I took my time this month to deal with only very simple things, but they will not want simple things. I don't know what's our problem. They are looking for depths. Mm. Ah, preach, preach. Ah. Mm. They are not going to do anything that I'm preaching, on, but they want to tickle their mental stimulants. No, 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 I've never had this before. They just want to hear new, new things, as if I'm Lizzie Avon. <laughs> the one I've been saying, they did not do it. Simple things that are able to change their life, they will not do it. Do, don't struggle against Paul. Struggle for the word. I told you. Don't fight. The only discipline you need is the discipline to keep taking in the word. You just keep taking in the word. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, back to Esau. Esau lost his own, he lost his, 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 his blessing. Isaac said to him, when you grow fat, your brother's yoke over your neck will snap. Don't struggle with the chain. Just keep growing fat. Let's sit down and put this chain around your neck. Don't fight the chain. Just keep growing fat. The fatness will snap the chain. Keep growing. Just keep planting. Look at it. Satan can make you come to church. Sorry, he, can, he may not stop from going to church. He may say, we go to church, we go to church, we go to church, we go to church. I say, hey, Pastor, I wanted to come to church, but my, I, had, I think Satan attacked me. I had a flat tire. That's not Satan's attack. Flat tire. If you want to know what Satan's attack is, you get up from your bed in the morning and open your Bible. You will remember 1,000 things that you should be doing now instead of reading this Bible. As I'm in church now, you even enjoy church. AC, cool music, no fights. Say, Lord, I want to pray for 10 minutes. Just kneel down. You will remember one million things. That's Satan's attack. Satan does not have a with you watching TBN. Eh? You're watching TBN. Eh? Watch Manzano. You're watching film. You're watching film. You're watching film. Christian film. Christian film. <laughs> Christian film. Christian film. You are not studying your word. He doesn't have a Just be watching film. Have you ever seen him dragging television? You must not watch this Manzano. You must not watch this Manzano. No, you, you, even you say, ah, on modern movie, be watching film. Be watching film. Be watching film. But don't ever sit down and study God's word. The spiritual activity with the highest level of restraint is the spiritual activity with the highest of power. The spiritual activity that gives you the highest level of restraint that you are facing the most terrible chance to do, that is where the real power is. So, Satan is not struggling with masturbation. He's not struggling with other things. Just sit at the... He wants you to never sit at the word. So, it's simple. Very simple. Keep eating. That will make you strong against temptation. If you look at Psalm 119, give me Psalm 119. We'll go to some verses of Psalm 119. Psalm 119 is the longest of all the scriptures. Is this Psalm 119? Longest of all the scriptures in the Bible. And every single word in Psalm 119 is about God's word. Every single verse. If you have read through it. I read through it this morning. The old chapter this morning. Before I came to church. All that you see here. Is about God's word. If you look at verse 1. Someone have verse 1. What does verse 1 say? Blessed are the undefiled in the way. Who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies. Who seek him with the whole heart. Verse 3 says what? 
they also do no iniquity. How, how do they do no iniquity? Eh? No. What, you know, he's trying to explain. It's coming from verse 1. He's telling you what they used to do. And it ends in that they don't do iniquity. So what do they do that, so that they don't do iniquity? Mm -hmm. What are you guys saying? Okay? Go back to verse 1. Verse 1. Give me verse 1. Blessed are those undefiled in the way who walk in the law. The word of God. Abi, that's what it means, the law. The law of God is the word. Verse 2 says, give me verse 2 now. Blessed are they who keep his testimonies. His testimonies are the word of God. His testimonies, his declarations are his word. And they seek him with all our vast finances. They do no iniquity. So if I'm going to be in a point where I do no iniquity, what do I do? I keep my heart in his law. Keep my heart in his testimonies. You cannot keep doing the two together. You cannot keep sinning and reading the Bible. Sinning and reading the Bible. The Bible will either keep you from sinning or sinning will keep you from reading the Bible. Something must happen. But you can't do the two perpendicularly. You can't do it. You can't do it simultaneously. Something must stop something. Look at verse 9. Verse 9. Psalm 19 verse 9. What does it say? Quickly. Verse 9. Help me sharply. Where without shall a young man, he even says a young man, a young man with all the congee in the world. Congeed. Honey. It's honey. Young man. He's the first one that will first be honey. Nobody can rest. How can a young man bless his way by taking heed according to thy word? Give me verse 10 quickly. Verse 10. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander away from your commandments. Give me the next verse. Verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my... Where? So that what? You see, so easy. So I'm not struggling not to sin. What am I struggling to do? Eh? What am I struggling to do? I'm struggling to keep his word in my heart. As long as I am able to keep his word in my heart, I will naturally not sin against him. So Satan, when he wants to struggle with me, he doesn't struggle with that. He struggles with the word. You won't get to see the word. No, 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 no. You sit down to the hey, your boss will call you. Hello? Uh -huh. All the people that don't call you saw these days. Satan will, go, Satan will be tapping them. Call him. Help me call him. Help me call him. Yeah, call him, call him, call him. Call him. Cryptocurrency will begin to rise. Yeah, begin to trade. Begin to trade. Begin to trade. Begin to trade. Thank God. Father, we thank you. That's all to ensure that this boy does not study the word. Give me verse 25. Verse 25, Psalm 19. My soul clings to the dust. Is that what it says? My soul cleaveth to dust. Dust feel dead. My soul is cleaving to it. How will I be revived? I will be revived by what? According to his word. How am I brought back to life? My soul cleaving to feel the deathly things. I'm revived by his word. Verse 49. Let's say it's verse 37. I love this verse 37. So verse 37 says, I used to, when I used to pray, when I was, you know, hooked up on porn, I used to pray verse 37, verse 18 together. Verse 37, verse 18. So look at what verse 37 says. It says, turn away my eyes from beholding vanity. NLT, what was, what was NLT? Verse 37, quickly. NLT. Verse 37. Turn my eyes from worthless, worthless things. Take away my eyes, these eyes. Turn it, Lord. IG, Instagram. Turn it, Lord. Shedim balam balam. Turn it, Lord. Buzz it, buzz it. Turn it, Lord. Turn my eyes from seeing worthlessness. It's a prayer. My eyes is the eyes of Jesus. I will not look at what Jesus will not look at. Turn my eyes. Jesus. Turn my eyes. Pray this. Because if I don't open the windows of my eyes, it's not getting to my heart. So I said that verse 37, turn my eyes from what less things. So verse 18 says what? Well, give me verse 18 quickly. In replacing that, replacing my eyes from what less things? Give me verse 18 quickly. 
Verse 18 says what? Open my eyes that I may see the wondrous things. So I'm shutting down my eyes here, but opening it here. So the same energy I spent on watching filthy, dirty things. I'm focused now. On the world. Focus on the world. Wondrous things out of the law. Hallelujah. There are wondrous things in God's word. Exciting things. Tell me about my future. I found it in his word. Open down my eyes. So shut my eyes from worthless things. Open it. 97. But I have a lot I wrote here. I won't be able to finish it. Verse 97. I'm up. 97. Let's say 97 when we end there. What does 97 say? I have a lot of your instructions. Continue. Go down. I think about them all day. It says it makes me wiser than my enemies. Hallelujah. God's word makes me wiser than my enemies. When the devil comes, I'm wiser than him. I'm wiser than the devil. I'm smarter than the devil. It says words make me wise. I have more understanding than all my teachers. Why? Because your testimonies are my meditations. I understand more than the ancients. More than the elderly, more than the matured, more than the old. I understand more than them. Why? Because I keep your precepts. I have restrained my feet from every evil way. How? That I may keep your word. My feet is restrained from evil. That I may keep your word. I have not departed from your judgments, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Though your precepts I get understand, therefore I hate every, because of you, I hate every false way. Because of your word. Satan knows this secret. The word of God is your weapon. Keep feeding on it. Listen, it's simple. I did not share Hebrew this morning. I didn't share Greek. I didn't tell you the real word, the real interpretation, the real, I didn't say all that. All I said is keep putting the word in you. Read it. I have a schedule for God's word. It's on your phone. If you know that you are busy, put on this these people have audio, Bible, and all that. Plug your ears. All these things are easy now. You plug your ears while you're jogging. Meka sute lebro shida da bahaya. Heka de 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 baha kosa. You just whoo shana da baha ta. Ende de 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 di ota ya kabade de boku shina na 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 nde ha. Iku kumbalu kumbalu kuta ba ba ba. Bonde lebe. Now you have nose mask. Nobody knows what you're doing. Iki ki bru 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 sha. Ende de de de. That's one benefit of nose mask. You are praying in the secret. The word. Feed yourself. Satan will answer off. Bible says he left Jesus. He will leave you alone. He will leave you alone. Rise if you just worship him this morning. He's worthy. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank him for his word. You don't have to keep struggling. Come to God's word.